Hello, this is Dr. Bill Strapay again with our sixth in a series of videos for Back to School. This particular video is going to focus on the update on our learning options. I want to be a little bit more specific today with you with regards to the three options. So we've received many questions about online learning, both, uh, both for students who selected option number two, live online synchronous learning, as well as for those who chose to participate in the hybrid learning option. So I'd like to explain a little bit more detail of these two options with you. First, across the district, about 40% about of our students selected one of the two online learning options for this school year. So 60% of our students will, will be returning to our buildings. And when you cut that number in half for the hybrid schedule, the district is going to be able to offer small class sizes that can safely adhere to the district's health and safety plan. At the elementary level, we will have teachers that are dedicated solely to online synchronous learning. This means that elementary teachers will be able to dedicate 100% of their time and attention to those students. And these are, the, these are the students who have chosen option number two. Also at the elementary level, students who chose the hybrid option, which op that's option number one, will come to school two days per week. They will be the same two days per week, except for the weeks that there is a holiday. In other words, a shortened week. That schedule is going to be provided to you both through your building principals and online. On the other three days, students will participate in live synchronous learning with their regular classroom teacher. Now, what does online synchronous learning look like? Whether you are an option one or an option two, here's what you can expect. First of all, students will not be starting at a computer screen, or I'm sorry, I should say staring at a computer screen for five hours per day. That's not going to be the case. The students are going to follow their daily schedule. They may, for example, log on to a Google Meet at 8.30 for a morning meeting. Then they may work independently on a task for a period of time and log back on, let's say, at 9.30 to check in and participate in one of their subjects. Maybe it's English language arts or mathematics. And that would be the lesson for the day. Students may then be placed in a breakout room with a small group to work on a task and the teacher will check in at another uh, predetermined time with the students. This will continue throughout the day with students receiving a midday break when in-person students have lunch and recess. At the elementary level, class sizes will be small enough that the teacher will have around 10 students, maybe a little bit fewer, in person. This is going to make it feasible for the teacher to check in with, uh, with the home learners to make sure they're doing okay and to provide various checkups and so on and so forth to check on the students throughout the day. So that's at the elementary level. Biggest concern there was for parents. My kid's going to be on for five and a half hours a day. No. As I described here, it's going to be broken into chunks. They're going to be off and on, off and on. But it is a complete day. So if school starts for you at 8.30, plan on like a typical day. If your school starts at 8.30 and you're not done until around 3.10 or so, that's basically the day with different activities happening throughout the day. Now, at the middle school and the high school level, there are dedicated teachers solely to online synchronous learning. It's going to be a little bit more difficult and complex because the number of classes that we offer and because teachers certifications are a little bit more specific when you get at the secondary level. However, both Mr. Catan and Mr. Leonard are working diligently to make this work where possible. Secondary students are going to follow a schedule of four classes per day, similar to the elementary students. They will have specific times where they have to report online for instruction and time when they will work independently 
so that they are, so that so that they are not in front of a computer screen necessarily for the entire day. Let me give you an example of a secondary schedule. I was a former uh, high school math and physics teacher. If I was teaching, let's say, mathematics at the high school, and I have an 80-minute block, I may take that first 20 minutes to review the homework from the night before. I may take the next 20 minutes to actually uh, show the students another concept, have them practice, and so on and so forth, as I demonstrate it. Then the next 20 minutes, the students would then uh, be able to then go and maybe work independently on some work that I gave them, check in, maybe I break them out into a, a, a group of students or what have you. And then we would all come back together, let's say, for the last 20 minutes to review what the students did, for me to check to make sure, check for understanding that they know what is going on, and then give them our homework assignment to begin working. That's what kind of you're going to expect at the secondary level, particularly middle school and high school. You may see a lot of that at the elementary too. It just depends on uh, the, um, the age of the students. But at the high school and at the middle school, I will tell you that the students will be begin, we're starting a little bit earlier with school this year. Uh, we will put that on uh, as, as soon as we can. Uh, but when I say a little bit earlier, it might be just like about 10 minutes earlier at the middle school and almost about 10 minutes early at the high school. The high school will also be letting you know that there are no homerooms at the high school anymore, that the uh, first period class is your homeroom. And uh, the end of the day for the high school, I believe this year, is at 2.33. So I believe the high school schedule is 7, uh, 7.43 to 2.33. And I believe that the middle school's new schedule is 735 to 230, uh, 233. We will have more information coming with that. So the students are going to be off and on during the day. High school, middle school, just four blocks. Four classes one day, four classes next, and they alternate days. They have an A day and a B day. Four classes on the A day, four on the B day. The building principals are still working on assigning students to the cohorts and homeroom teachers and they will be releasing the schedules as soon as they are available. Once again, we thank you for your patience with this process as it has been very cumbersome. We want to assure that the classes are balanced and that the families in the same household, very important, families in the same household are attending school on the same day across the district. If you have children that are in different buildings, and in your family and in, within your household, let's say, some of the student, children may have a different last name or have you, please contact your building principal. And the accommodations will be made so that we can be assured that the students in the same household are all attending school on the same day. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. Once again, thank you so much for your patience. We're working hard here. And... We can't wait to see everybody back here on September the 8th.